Hey fellow agents, this is Agent Smith and we are playing Quest for Glory 4. So I'm going to go ahead over, uh, we tried going into this place but I'm just not quite ready for that. I got in there and everything but I wasn't ready to be in that place so we're going to try checking out this doctor this time around. This is this old man? The old man walks with a slumped back and a sad, dejected look in his eyes. He seems to be searching for something that he hasn't been able to find. And greet him. You greet the old man. This may not be worth Good it. Good day. Okay. Have you seen my honor? Mm, no. He seems like he's going to be a conversationalist. What's your name, old man? I, I, oh. I am. This would be the guy I robbed last night. Have you seen my honor? If it's an item in your house, yes, I have. Honor. Have you seen my honor? I think I'm gonna have to find honor for her. I am looking for honor. Have you seen honor? Is he saying Anna or honor? All right. Either way, let's go ahead and check this doctor's place out. This is going to be riddles, okay. Huh. This looks like the hassle of Dr. Brain. This strange device is labeled Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. Hmm. I wonder if that stands for something. Be careful, it might be a trap. <laughs> because it spells trap. It reminds you of a porthole minus the glass cover. So it's definitely not a glass of port. <laughs> uh, 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 bad man, I swear the puns are worse than the ever now. His eyes seem to follow you as you walk through the hallway. It reminds you of a... Just ports everywhere. It's a truly impressive, original, multimedia work created out of whitewash and sawdust. Huh? There's a sign on the door. It says, warning, do not open without appropriate precautions. The sign says, this is the key maze. Okay. The sign on the door says, Dr. Cranium's Dr. Cranium. private Dr. laboratory. Dr. Brain, same difference. Entrance by prior appointment or demonstration of superior intelligence only. Okay, well, let's check this stuff out. How interesting. It sounded as though someone knocked on the other side of the door as well, several times. You hear something bouncing around behind the door. A lot of something. Sound like a good idea. No, oh, jeez. Oh no, you've been antwerped. <laughs> Fortunately, these are just baby antwerps, so the attack wasn't fatal. Yeah, I was gonna say. The statue is chewing gum. Let's see if I can get this thing to trap one of them. Welcome to the Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor, or TRAP. You can analyze the creature you wish to capture, then apply the proper bait. If the animal is in the immediate vicinity, the trap will catch it for you. If the animal is not in the area, you'll just have to catch it yourself, but at least you'll know what to feed it. Are you ready to identify an animal? Yes. Does it move? Yes. Does it have legs? No. Does it bounce? Yes. Is it alive? I think so. It's a snake that swallowed a rubber ball. No. Well, then it must be a kangaroo. No. Oh, I know. It's a frog refugee from a French restaurant. No. Surely you can't be trying to catch a baby antwerp. Yes. You've got to be kidding. No. I'll say I didn't warn you, but if you really just must catch one, baby antwerps love avocado. Do I have that? Mm, let's see. 
avocado and garlic sandwiches. Sweet. Rations are always good for that stuff. Uh, and strangest adventuring meals you've encountered since they, uh, still they, they do last a long time and will keep the, you from starving to death. Of course, you may wish you'd starve to death if you had to eat them often, too often. I'm glad their opinion of, uh, this stuff is as bad as mine. Do I, uh, give it to the thing? Bait the trap with avocado you from your sandwich. Avocado was never high on your list of favorite foods anyway. The trap starts working. Get it. You've caught an Antwerp. It's simply amazing. That's pretty cool. The Antwerp has a soft, delicate fur over a basically rubbery base. Okay, can I get it? Straighten out your jacket and re- Thank you, your answer were pissed up in process. Mm -mm. Yes, actually. It does have legs. That six-legged creature thing that's on everything that we see and the symbols we keep collecting everywhere. Does it have more than one leg? Yes. One and two, yes. One and three, yes. More than four, yes. It's getting tricky. Does your animal have more than five? Yes. Does it have exactly six legs? Yes, it does. Does it look like a cross between an octopus and a squid, only with fewer tentacles? Yes. Hmm, well, hexapods mostly eat heroes. Sounds like a good idea to you. <laughs> no. You got another one? I was pondering. Well, in a pinch, a clove of garlic will do. Yes. Good to know. We might be able to catch ourselves one if it's something we need for future purposes. You've caught an Antwerp. It's simply a... You've... You've caught... Uh, do I actually have it? How do I get it? It's a cute little bouncing baby Antwerp. And we're very impressed that you managed to catch one long enough to look at it. Well, that door's full of traps, so... Let's go this way now. We're full of more of these Antwerps, anyway. There is no response to... You don't hear anything behind this door. I'll open it. I wish I could pick all of these doors. This is the Antwerp maze. The fuck? Antwerps are naturally bouncy, so all you have to do is continually rotate the maze until the baby Antwerp bounces over to the key, then out through the exit. Is that the purpose of all that? Okay. Rotate. And rotate one more. Boom. Oh, now I gotta get it out. Alright, back to the other end. And. Out. Congratulations. You've used the baby Antwerp to get Dr. Cranium's laboratory key from the maze. You add the key to your key ring. Oh, lordy. Alright. Next. You faintly hear a voice saying, Don't knock! Come on in! From beyond the door. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. You hear mysterious bubbling and sizzling noises. Every once in a while, you think you hear someone muttering to himself. There's definitely a dark guy in there. Oh, more puzzles. Okay. I don't know how exactly this is gonna fit, but it's obviously a key shape, so... You know, this is appropriate, I have to say, for, uh... For the Dr. Cranium theming of this all. No, that's definitely there. Boom, there you go. Mm, keys everywhere. Oh, oh. I need to put the key in. There we go. <laughs> You've managed to find Dr. Cranium's keyhole and open the door. You pass through into Dr. Cranium's private laboratory. Okay. Quickly, Igor, the fluid. I must have the fluid. Oh, excuse me. I thought it was Igor coming in to assist me. He helps out in the lab sometimes. 
Now then, what can I do for you? My name is... You say hey. hello to the scientist. Welcome to my laboratory. You must have more than the usual intelligence and perseverance to have made it in here. Yes, of course. You introduce yourself to Dr. Cranium and tell him a little about your adventures. I should be most interested to hear about your travels and your scientific discoveries along the way. Unfortunately, I have very little time for that right now. Perhaps we can discuss your adventures when you next return. Sure, sounds like a plan. <laughs> you explained to Dr. Cranium that magic is really a lot like science and even deals with the same elements. Oh, nonsense! There's ah, no such yes, thing I'm... as magic, there is only science. Okay. What you call magic is simply scientific phenomena that have not yet been properly investigated and catalogued. I'll agree with that. <laughs> uh, let me see, before I make a thief sign at him, let me save my progress. I know this thing autosaves and stuff, but I never trust that it autosaves where I think it will. So, one last thing. You thumb your nose, rub your belly, and so on. I was afraid of that. As an outsider here, you have apparently not yet built up an immunity to the Mordavian dancing sickness. Ah, yes. We used to have several people in town who exhibited those symptoms, but I have not seen any cases in quite some time. Let us hope the disease does not prove fatal in your case. Yes, yes, it'll be fine. I'm glad he noticed. All right. Let's talk to you about stuff. What you gotta say? This guy's probably gonna talk a lot. My name is Dr. Cranium. I am Mordavia's chief scientist and a certified genius. Some call me mad, but I much prefer Dr. Cranium. <laughs> ah, yes. Science. I'm glad you asked. Science is the process of systematically increasing our knowledge of the world through observation and experiment. Okay. Unfortunately, some of the townspeople here seem to have no concept of the wonders of science. Some of them even claim my little inventions are magical. Such poppycock. There's no such thing as magic. Okay. Still, the townspeople insisted that I should be able to use my magic to cure wounds and sickness. I told them that I am a scientist, not a doctor. But they wouldn't listen. <laughs> I had of little course. choice but to concoct they some know, simple man. elixirs. They were childishly pleased. Science is really so simple once you understand it. Ah, oh, you got potions and stuff. If you want to improve your stamina, then you should make sure you eat a healthy diet from all the different food groups and get plenty of aerobic exercise. That is science. Hmm. Yeah, potions though. Oh, you must mean my patented healing drink. You may have my last one. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, I have forgotten the formula for its main ingredient. Of course. If you can help me remember it, I will be able to make some more healing drinks. Although the work is very time-consuming. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a puzzle that's built into uh, the manual again. And thankfully, I have the manual downloaded. Uh, let me pull that up and we'll take a look. Jeez, that was, took a minute. The... Uh, the list of information that I had had before, which is like a, a book, uh, which is the manual, but it's a book that I found in a thieves guild uh, or in the guild guild, uh, didn't have the information, so I had to go hunt down a separate list, which actually has all of its formulas. Like apparently it was a sheet that went along with everything. Back in the day when you bought box sets of things, you used to get all kinds of extra things inside. So, Volthofen is what I'm looking for. Thankfully, this is alphabetized to make it easier to find. So we need wind, fire, earth, fire and wind. Thank you. With that information, I'm sure I shall be able to create some sensational scientific solutions. Yes, sure, sure. Can you make the stamina potion? So, want to no, guess not. Poison cures. Oh. Oh, you must mean my new universal poison antidote. Yeah, you sure. may have this one, but I will need some help with the formula to make more. Also, I am afraid I only have time to make one each day. Yeah, it sounds like that's going to be the case for all these. Betazine. Betazine is water, fire, 
fire. There we go. Water. Earth and fire. Thank you! With that information, I'm sure I shall be able to create some sensational scientific solutions. Okay, you got any empty flasks? You ask Dr. Cranium if he can spare an empty flask for specimen collection. Of course, of course! <laughs> I am always delighted to assist scientific research of any kind, and I have plenty of flasks. You may have this one. Awesome, thanks. What's the experimentation you were talking about? Experiments are the meat and drink of science. First, you must come up with a hypothesis based on your understanding of the scientific elements. Then perform an experiment to test the hypothesis. Afterwards, you have a pizza. Oh, there you go. <laughs> pizza, you say. Scientific elements? Earth is for solidity and stability. Yep. Air gives freedom and movement. Fire provides power and energy. Sounds Water, like magic. fluidity, and life. Pizza, of course, is the most important element of all. Of course. Pizza represents the essence of well-roundedness and regaining strength. Most importantly, you can have it delivered in under half an hour in most areas. <laughs> What about your hypothesis, then? A hypothesis is a scientific guess. One predicts the result of an operation, performs an experiment to test the prediction, then has a pizza to celebrate the result. This guy really it likes is very pizza. important to stay flexible, however. Sometimes the experiment may give a different result than predicted by the hypothesis. This guy really Since likes his pizza. scientists don't like to make mistakes, we always write the hypothesis in pencil. Okay. What about pizza? Pizza is a crucial ingredient in many scientific formulae. There is a nearly infinite variation in its effects, depending on whether one starts with pepperoni, mushrooms, artichokes, or plain cheese. Okay. One should always order extra pizza in case the experiment requires additional materials. Besides, science is hungry work. <laughs> Continuing. Anyway, thanks for all that information. Was, uh, you said you were looking for Igor. Igor is the grave digger and tombstone yeah. carver. Yeah, I met him. Uh, business has been slow lately, perhaps because there are very few people left in town. So Igor sometimes comes in to help me with my work. Makes sense. Igor has had less work of late. The forest is just as dangerous, but there aren't very many people left in town who are stupid enough to go out there at night, you know. Well, <laughs> I I'm like here. to think of it as a sort of evolution in action. And I'll be sure to go out. Igor is carving out quite a niche for himself in the gravestone business. <laughs> you might say he is well on his way to becoming a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> then again, you might not. Yeah, no, because that's two bad puns you just threw in there. Where's the cemetery? The cemetery is outside of town to the east. It has proven a fruitful source of materials for my experiments. Mm. There are also some interesting and cryptic puzzles to be solved there. I'm sure, you jokester. Jeez. Alright, what about this fluid? Essential etheric fluid is an important ingredient in my formula for reanimating dead bodies. It contains the essence of the element of water, the most important ingredient in life science. Of course. Your laboratory this itself? Laboratory is where or I laboratory. Some of my most important research. Lately, I have been trying to bring life back to a dead body, and to brew the perfect cup of tea. Okay. Dead to life, you say. <laughs> mm. Reanimating the dead is just another day's work in the life of a scientist. Even science cannot bring a person back right the way they were, but one can use scientific principles to restore the semblance of life and energy to formerly dead flesh. Right, right. Okay. And you're making the perfect tea, you said. The one alchemical combination that I have thus far been unable to fully analyze is that of a good cup of tea. I'm sure there must be a way to duplicate the effects of nature, but the results have not been promising so far. Perhaps you would like a cup of spearmint and beefsteak tea? What the uh, hell? You put beefsteak in there. This is even harder than rehydration solution and reviving dead tissue. You know, put the beefsteak in there, you have a perfectly good spearmint tea. Research is the heart and soul of science. 
Without constant experimentation to prove or disprove one's hypotheses, the scientist is left trying to solve the world's problems by guesswork. That is hardly the most efficient way to achieve results. Okay. I try to maintain a modest selection of useful experimental equipment in my simple laboratory. Unfortunately, it has become very difficult to obtain the most modern scientific accessories since the road out of the valley became closed by the swamp. Hmm. Which means we gotta figure that out for sure. Hey, mad. Mad. mad? mad? They all call me mad, but what do they know of madness? I am not mad. A bit perturbed about the world situation and how I get so little respect, perhaps, but certainly not mad. Not that kind of mad. I mean crazy, buddy, but that's all right. Thank you for your help. <laughs> so I got an empty flask now. Got myself a couple of uh, oops, empty flask information. A few healing potions, or a healing potion. And a couple of poison cures. Which is useful. I think he he basically implied I should be able to come back every day for this, so... Let's go ahead and try to figure our way out of here. Come back and visit again! I will, I will. Oh, and if you see Igor, please tell him I still need the fluid. I don't know what fluid he's referring to, but... Let's go see if Igor's there. Uh, you ain't got nothing for me. All right, never mind. Oh, bad place. Jill. Uh, Eagle. I guess I won't be telling him about the fluids. Well, either way, we're gonna break into this place this time. I think we got what we need for this whole situation. I'm pretty sure we're good to go. But I think it's just knowing how to deal with the creature. We have a clove of garlic, so we should be good, and we could be able to get through. Maybe we even have the way to get into the entrance this way. So let's see how we do. Either way, I'll see you in the next one as we try to break into this monastery and see about getting our uh, boss back into a human form, hopefully. Have a great day. Hey, fellow Asians. Don't forget to like and subscribe by clicking the button in the center of the screen. You can also find the last video by clicking the button to the left. And you can take a look at some of the other stuff I've done by clicking the button to the right. Hope you enjoyed the video. And have a good day.